Hello, everyone. <coughs> so, I am Luca. I'm a DevOps engineer and uh, like to think of me as, as, as an open source enthusiast. And today we will talk about DistroBox. Uh, so, what is DistroBox? DistroBox is a tool uh, written in POSIX shell, uh, very simple, which wraps Podman or Docker to have an abstraction of uh, the complexities of these tools and create environments that seamlessly integrate with the host. So it was born inspired by the great work of uh, Fedora's toolbox. And, um, but I needed a solution that could work both with Polman, Docker, or in the future with other container managers, for example. And uh, so a solution also that could be uh, distribution agnostic, both on the host side and the guest side. And generally speaking, something that could make easier to, to use software that wasn't packaged as Flatpak or, or Snap. So how could we think of it? So if you think of Flatpak as your app, your app which is uh, unbound from the base operating system, or Docker as a service which is unbound and isolated from the base operating system, a distro box or a pet container is an entire user space uh, unbound from the base operating system, but still very integrated with the base, uh, the base host. You could think it seems like CH root with <laughs> extra steps, and you uh, could be right, but actually not. So, uh, as I was saying, it, it uses um, a container manager, so it's simpler to use than simple ch root. The CLI experience is a little bit more polished. And the um, container managers are battle tested. They are used in the past years in the cloud environment, and they are very, very, very re reliable. And they in integrate an easy to use image management system. And you can tap in the healthy ecosystem of container images for the cloud. So you can have a lot of uh, various operating system and versions. And most of the time, they are even officially uh, maintained by the, the, the main projects. So we have two, for now, just two um, container managers supported, which is Podman and Docker. Podman can run in rootless mode. Uh, so no sudo required, or can run in rootful mode if you need it. Uh, Docker can only run in rootful mode for now. They are much faster and lighter than VMs. And the, the goal is to use them as a complete replacement, replacement for your CLI in the everyday use. Optionally, they can even act as a separated system uh, having a separate uh, system D instance or init instance, and even have complete graphical session. A word of, of warning, this is not a security enhancing tool. Uh, this is not like Flatpak that sandboxes your stuff so you are more, more secure. This is not more, not, not less secure than your base operating system. So, you have some advantages by using a rootless uh, distro box using Podman because even inside the, the, your container you can use sudo, but you never are really root on the base operating system. You're still a, are your user. So you have a little bit uh, of, an, of an advantage there, there but for, for a root, rootful distro box, root inside the container is root outside of it, so be careful. Uh, the integration uh, is quite tight with the uh, base, base host. Um, obviously, uh, it shares the, say, the, the home uh, di directory of the, of the user, but we have also integration with Wayland, uh, audio, both pipe wire and pools, uh, SSH agent, GPG agent. We have the user system, the integration, so from inside the a distro box, you can just use sysnctl dash dash user and use your host um, systemd. You can use uh, the, the host dbus session, um, user session. 
uh, access for removable devices, um, so slash dev, and uh, as, a, as I was saying, an optionally isolated system instance, it automatically generates desktop entries for the uh, containers that you create, so it, it's easier to access them. You have them in uh, tightly in your uh, application list. And there is integration, uh, so you can launch host command from the container and vice versa. So we can have a tight integration both ways. The, the usage was thought to be as simple as possible. So the main goal was to abstract the complexity. So uh, you have just some basic management commands. You have your create, enter, list, remove, and stop for the containers. Everything can work without specifying any flag, any, anything. The, they are saying default, uh, I think they are saying defaults. Um, you have, you, you can choose your, your image, you can choose your name, you can even choose a custom uh, home for, for the host, so you don't litter your home with uh, .files, for example. And uh, I also um, add some utilities. One, one is the upgrade command, so you can, it, it, it will just uh, cycle through all your distro boxes and use the package manager of each one to keep them updated like a central hub. You have the ephemeral distro boxes, which are ba basically uh, similar to the um, Docker or Podman run dash dash rm, which will create, enter, and when you exit, destroy the temporary container, which is very useful for testing or for, um, you know, playing around. And there is the generate entry command to create the desktop icons for, for your containers. So which are the use cases for this type of, of tool? Obviously, uh, the immutable desktop is one of the uh, use cases. Uh, I use one, so um, you're, it's not really easy when you need the tool to just do, you know, go and install it because you need to reboot. <laughs> and uh, so if you are on endless OS, uh, Fedora, Silver, Pew, Silver Blue, or uh, Kinoite, and uh, Micro OS, and lately I've added support for the Steam Deck, uh, you can have your mutable environment and play around with it. But even if you are not on an immutable operating system, you can have the advantages of uh, um, dim uh, diminishing the number of packages in the base operating system, so you have less moving parts that can break, um, so updates are more likely to be successful. Uh, you have a user land can, that can be easily replaced, and it's easier to make reproducible um, user lands for, for if you distro hope a lot, for example. But talking of apps, some apps are specific to some distribution, and maybe they are not tested on other version of the same distribution or uh, not supported in a newer or older systems, or simply, yeah, they, they are not supported. Uh, maybe you can use uh, a tool like Alien to pass a deb to R RPM or vice versa, but then you have dependency that can cause the a system breakage. Um, and maybe for this app, there is no flat pack, there is no snap, or this app is not packaged at all. Maybe it's only on the AUR, on copper, OBS, or on a PPA. Or generally speaking, you don't want to litter your system with a lot of stuff that maybe you don't use anymore. So this is useful. And another use case, which actually is why I started uh, developing this was having an enterprise laptop and sometimes in enterprise you have some um, regulations that you have to follow and maybe you cannot be a uh, super user on, on your laptop uh, but you need your tools to work. Maybe uh, you, are, you are a DevOps engineer, a software engineer, a sysadmin and you need your stuff to work. You can do that in your containerized environment, or generally speaking, mix and matching distros. Uh, you may be on a LTS um, stable release and you want latest software for some reason, 
or you are on a bleeding edge uh, release and you need a very old software for some reason. And these boxes uh, can ensure compatibility up almost 10 years back in time. So the diversity of uh, distribution are about 60 uh, if we count combinations and permutations of version and um, distribution themselves. They go, go back to Debian 7, CentOS 7, Ubuntu 14, or 4, they are the oldest uh, on, the, on the list. You can go older if you have custom images, for example, because maybe the, uh, the mirrors of the repo are, are not working anymore. Uh, but mainly if, um, if you go uh, to back in time, like on Debian 6 and CentOS 6, uh, the libc is a little bit too old and won't work with uh, kernels after 4.11. And you will need that uh, grab entry for the VC call, but it's doable. Um, and obviously there is support for of all the latest distribution, Arch, Linux, uh, Fedora Rawhide, Tumbleweed, uh, Ubuntu, Debian Unstable. And you can mix and match uh, however you like. Uh, container side, the, um, I mean, the, the, the only um, dependency is really having a POSIX compliant BSH and having one of the supported uh, package manager. Why a package manager uh, is needed? Well, uh, if, no, if you take a cloud image, for example, of Ubuntu, is only 30 megabytes. And it's really, really small and lacks a lot of software that maybe you expect on even on a minimal install. So uh, what I do during the initialization of the, the container, I install all the basic stuff that you, a uh, user expects even for, for a command line uh, environment. So a package manager is needed. If something is not supported, just open a feature request or if you are, if you are in, uh, if you want to help, open a pull request. Uh, every contribution is always welcome. Uh, Performance-wise, um, uh, I did some tests using the Foronix test suite, and um, it was on a Fedora 35 uh, host using uh, a Fedora 35 container and a Clear Linux container. And as you can see, the overhead of Fedora 35 container on top of Fedora 35 uh, was really minimal. Uh, we were between one and 2% of the host performance, but the red part is the clear Linux container. The clear Linux container is consistently faster than the host itself because of the optimization that clear Linux brings. So it's the, the overhead is low enough to uh, reap the benefits of having something like that. So, talking of apps, uh, you don't want to always open your terminal, enter the distro box and launch your apps, maybe. So I've provided an export command that will uh, integrate the applications from inside the container out to the host. Uh, the basic one, you, you, you can export apps, uh, single binaries or um, user system D services. Uh, we will see in a demo later. But for example, this is a simple Arch container uh, which has uh, Atom installed inside. You want it outside of it, you just export dash dash app and you will have your Atom uh, or your app outside of the container, easily accessible and it will be out, all automatic for, for the launch and it will be transparent for you. And same is for um, binaries and system D services. So, uh, they will have just um, the system D services will have like um, a prefix which will be the name of the container that is running that one but you can just use it from your host same for the binaries you just put them in your path and you can use them transparently really so let's show something I don't know if I can, maybe white is better. So let's do a normal terminal. So starting from here, uh, let's zoom it. 
starting from here, we can list our DSR boxes simply by listing them. <laughs> uh, they will be green if they are running, they will be yellow if they are not. And for example, uh, an example of application I would like to show is um, Bitwig, which is a, a digital audio workstation. Okay. Uh, actually, Bitwig is um, distributed as a Debian, uh, a Deb package uh, for Ubuntu 24 app or a flat pack. So obviously you can use the flat pack, but sometimes you cannot use the flat pack. For example, if you want to use uh, a tool called uh, Yabridge, which lets you use uh, plugins from Windows inside the uh, Linux um, digital audio workstation. So to, to just install it, we can I created previously um, an Ubuntu uh, distro box and just you enter the Ubuntu one. You can see it will, the, f the first time it will do some steps. With, uh, the, the very first time you create the distro box and launch it is a bit slow uh, because there is the first step installing basic packages. Obviously, depending on your internet connection, it has to go and fetch the packages, but the other times you enter it, for example, now I exit and enter it again, it's quite fast. So let's install the Bitwig. I should have the command. Um, yeah, so this one, is the command to install it from the between the documentation really enables the 386 architecture and installs it really. Um, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, there are some other um, outputs. Um, the, there are a series of hooks that uh, Distrobox implements inside the guest container to make it work with the host integration. So you don't have like read-only paths or generally speaking, you have maybe some, some, some type of uh, conflicts. So let's launch it. Uh, So it's running. Um, what is saying? I'll continue. And yeah, I mean, uh, okay, it's on the other screen. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. And it has full audio integration with the host. Uh, I don't really see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so it's working as expected, and uh, you have an icon in the in the in the dock. I I will quickly change the uh, the, the um, screen sharing option just to to show you. Nope, no, no, not a good idea. Uh, sorry for that. But uh, yeah, so uh, I could um, I could show you uh, how to integrate it, but uh, probably you won't see the the you won't see the the icon. Uh, but let's try anyway, exit, and if you distro box export uh, dash dash uh, app bitweek, so it's 
So it was feedback that it, it was uh, exported. You can see it in the local share application. You will see that there is a Ubuntu 20.04 Bitwig desktop. So uh, you have to trust me; it's my in my uh, application list now. Uh, you can export the binary uh, of Bitwig itself. Uh, so if we go which Bitwig, uh, what was Bitwig Studio? So if I want to export it, uh, I can do distro box export dash dash binary. Uh, this one in, I don't know, local bin, for example. And if I exit the container, so now I am on the host, I can launch Bitwig Studio directly from the host. It will be transparent. So if you install other types of, um, of uh, binaries, like, I don't know, FFmpeg or MPV, something like that. It will be like having it on, on the host itself. And as I was saying, we can also export um, services. So we can, I created um, a, a distro box for, for the service, which is a uh, sync thing. Uh, it's a synchronization. Uh, file synchronization program. If we install it, yep. uh, this one will create um, a systemd uh, service, but you cannot really use systemd services inside the container if you don't create uh, one with a separate systemd. Uh, so what we can do is um, distrobox export service sync thing. It will inform you that you have now this new, um, uh, this new service, which you can just see like that. Now it's not running, so you can restart it. Uh, yeah, uh, demo reload. As you can see now, it's running. It's running inside the container, but you access it from the host system D. And well, it's available here. Is it? Simply. So it's pretty transparent, and you can simply, uh, you know, access what it would be uh, otherwise difficult to access, really. Uh, another example, uh, being on, a, in this case, on an immutable file system, having the possibility of installing uh, rootful containers is, is, is important. Um, for example, list dash dash root. You can see I'm running a libvirt uh, container. What is it? Let's enter it. Sorry. This one is um, uh, an Alma Linux container which has a separate system D instance. This one is completely separate from the host, and you can have your own uh, services in here, like libvirt. So this one is really useful, in at least in my case, because installing libvirt and all the, the dependency is quite demanding, and it's a, lo a lot of stuff. Uh, this is just simpler for me. I open a container, I can DNF or YAM or whatever, install whatever I need. 
And then you can just use it as a normal uh, distribution, um, much more similar, for example, an LXC, for example, where, where you have a complete system inside. And I can use Virt Manager to access it. And Virt Manager itself is in another distro box, <laughs> which is my main distro box. Um, so it's working as expected, and it helps with the software availability. It helps with the incompatibilities and with testing also, because you can test on various type of, um, of environments much easier, and you don't have the quirks of, you know, being maybe sandboxed, you cannot launch a graphical application or you cannot launch, I don't know, uh, some type of, of process. Um, so the, the, there are also uh, ways to manage it graphically. Uh, there is a, a, an emerging app called Atoms. Uh, where is it? where this is from uh, Mirko Bromlin, great guy, and this uh, lets you uh, install from FlatHub this application and then you can manage it um, simply from, from this application. You can have a console, you can just have your terminal and launch also application from here. Oh yeah, it's already open. Uh, you can launch application from here. So it's a, a, a very neat way, I uh, really like it, uh, way to um, manage them. So you have your command line, you have your graphical applications. And yeah, you can even, uh, I, I will not demo this because it's a little bit complicated and unstable, but you can have um, separate instances of, um, of GNOME. For example, uh, this is a CentOS 7 machine where it's running the latest GNOME inside a distro box uh, and you can just select it at login time. You can do the same with KDE. So it can be also useful in case you are, you are stuck on, on, on an old distribution to, to have access to one of the latest softwares. This is a little bit experimental still. Uh, the integration here is really advanced, so there are, there are still corner cases, but it's doable. And uh, yeah. So back to the... So what's, uh, what are the next steps for, for the project? One of the, of the missing stuff is uh, rootless Docker and uh, container D plus nerd CTL support. Sadly, I cannot still use them because uh, there is a miss, it's missing um, an option for the username space uh, keep ID, uh, which is useful to, to map yourself inside the container so you don't have mismatching uh, identities. Um, Adding uh, alternate backends, uh, there is Catman, which is a, a CH root manager that I wrote, uh, and there is KRun VM to, to run micro VMs uh, on top of this. So you can, for example, have your CentOS 7 inside a micro VM, CentOS 8, and the important thing is it's really useful for if you have to do kernel development, for example. Uh, adding a sandboxing mode, which can seem a, a bit counterintuitive because uh, until now I was talking how much it is integrated with the base host. But having the bare minimum integration just to have your graphical application working, but having a sandboxing so you can trust it a little bit more uh, is useful. Obviously, adding more tests. Uh, right now, I have a uh, some pipelines of GitHub to continuously test the compatibility of uh, all the distribution that I declare in the documentation. And yeah, having better CLI UX, uh, feedback is always welcome. 
Um, no. So TLDR. This toolbox uh, is a nice tool to enable both backward and forward compatibility in the software. Uh, adds you the freedom to use whatever distribution you want and without having you know to reinstall everything each time. And generally speaking, making you more more comfortable with your own machine. If you want to contribute, uh, it's on GitHub and there is a contributing uh, document that you can read and helps you to, uh, to have the, the basics for the contribution. Yeah, report bugs, typos, plenty of them. Uh, improvements, uh, I'm always open to constructive criticism and, and improvements and yeah, if you feel like contribution, the contribute, it's always welcome. Uh, I'm listing here uh, for whoever uh, downloads the PDF, there is a, a list of um, useful links um, on how to use it. So there is the Distrobox documentation. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that, so it should be uh, quite exhaustive. Uh, there is the benchmarks and there is uh, a couple of videos by uh, George, George Castro uh, on how he uses in, on Fedora Silver Blue and how he manages to um, integrate it in, with, with his own uh, workflow. Thank you very much. And yeah, this was the, this box. We have eight minutes uh, for, for the questions. So if you have questions, uh, I'm here. Sure, there's a microphone here. So we have uh, two questions. First one, do you have GPU support? Can you fully lose use on, for example, NVIDIA card? Yeah, yeah. so. The, the hardware is passed through the, the container. Obviously, you have to install the drivers inside the container. Um, generally speaking, for now, I still don't install the Mesa uh, drivers. Uh, I, I was thinking of it. I saw uh, even the guys of, uh, of Fedora Toolbox, uh, just today, they pushed an update where they installed the basic open source drivers which is a really good idea and I want to implement it also, which it's a bit more difficult on my side because I need to have compatibility on all the range of distros. So I, I need mainly check what's the package name <laughs> of them. Uh, for the NVIDIA part, if you have drivers on the host and inside, you can use that. Uh, I, I have, um, in, uh, there is a, um, a matrix channel of distrobox and a telegram channel and some of the user have NVIDIA cards and they use it inside the container because they install Steam inside the container and they work for, uh, play from inside the container. So yeah, it works. Okay, and second question, you told about removable USB devices. Can you add a USB device while the container is running? Yeah, yeah, it's transparent. When you plug it, it pops. Uh, may, generally speaking, it's just mounting all slash dev inside the container. So if something uh, pops out in, in dev, you see it in the container. It's not a problem. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. Any questions from online? Okay, I, I can close them. Thank you very much.